In this video, we're going to do a little bit of education. We're going to talk about stage analysis popularized by Stan Weinstein. So if you want more information from the creator itself, definitely go Google him and check him out. The idea behind stage analysis is that we can break how the market generally moves into four stages and knowing which stage we are in can allow us to kind of curtail a trading plan for that or even know when to participate and when to stay out. And that's my hope is that by watching this, you'll have a general understanding of when can I look at markets? When can I move out of markets? We're going to go into trade ideas and show a little bit of a layout that I've built that may help you find stocks in certain stages so that you can go through and you can kind of narrow down your trading and say, I only want to trade stage one or two or three or four. So this is a kind of a broad way to do it. There's obviously no exact way to break down the market because it changes all of the time. But the idea here is we're simply saying, can we categorize what's going on with different phases of the market and we can figure out what we should do based off those individual stages. Now, this first graphic I'm going to start off with is from Brian Shannon, who's a mentor and a friend of mine who shares this on his blog and on his website, Alpha Trends, all of the time. And it basically talks about the four stages. So we'll go one at a time here and we'll start with accumulation. So accumulation is a phase in which, generally speaking, you have a lot of nothing when it comes to movement. You have a lot of sideways movement in the accumulation stage. No one is very excited to buy or no one is very excited to sell. These can be stocks that can be considered dead or they're stocks that have fallen from great heights and are moving sideways for some period of time. In the accumulation phase, you can see this kind of sideways type action in which a stock has either stopped going down or is not going down anymore or just basing sideways for a period of time. Again, this is generally speaking due to either digestion or boredom. You'll notice these top and bottom phases. Digestion essentially meaning that it's had a great run up or it's had a great crash. It's had some sort of dramatic repricing in the stock's action. And now there's a little bit of an equilibrium where buyers think it's a fair price and they're buying down here, but they're not willing to chase the price upwards. They're just going to buy at this level. This is a place where value investors will generally start to take place in the market. Now, I have highlighted here, I'm going to have to move a little bit out of the way. I've highlighted here on this stock mind med, which we talked about on the podcast a few times. And you can see it had this great fall from a pretty height. If you go back even further on the chart, it was even higher. But it basically has chopped sideways here for a number of days, four or five days kind of sideways here. That, or not four or five days, almost uh, two to three years, I think. So yeah, 2021 to 2024. So I, I meant four to five years sideways in this period of time. And that is an accumulation phase. It's not going up, it's not going down, it's really just chopping around in this space. That is a repricing of this security to say, this is a boat where participants at this time, based on whatever fundamentals are occurring and all of that nonsense, they think that this is the price of the stock. Now, why do we always care about what these stages are? Well, first of all, this particular phase, when you're in this stage right here, there's two ways you can look at the market. You can either say, okay, we're range bound. So I'm going to try to buy near the bottom of the range. I could use an oscillator or some sort of indicator for that. I'm going to buy near the bottom of the range and I'm going to try to sell near the top of the range and just try to play that range knowing that we're not really going anywhere one way or the other. Range trades make absolute perfect sense here. Another way to simplify this, I think, is with moving averages. I have a 50-day and a 200-day moving average on this chart right here. And you can see when they start to kind of be sloppy and messy down in this area, you generally know you're in some sort of either stage one or stage four. Uh, you never know till after the fact which of one of those they are. But you're in these range-bound phases where you're not going higher, you're not going lower. It's just kind of crossing, crisscrossing back and forth between these moving averages. So again, another way to play it would be okay, if we're overextended from the moving average, I'm going to short or I'm going to sell some. If we're you know too far under, I'm going to buy some as long as these moving averages are flat, right? So don't really pay too much attention to us hitting the moving averages or anything like that. Just note that the pink one, which is the 200 day moving average, that's flat. That's just showing me over the last 200 days, 
We haven't really done anything bullish. We haven't really done anything bearish. Another way to look at this is volume. I actually have to just bring this up just a little bit right here. There we go. So we have high volume on the downtrend. Then during stage one, there's generally low volume because there's not a lot going on. There's not a lot of price actions. So there's probably not a lot of news. There's not a lot of fundamentals, not a lot happening during stage one. And then you <laughs> really got to get out of the way here. But we have this high volume breakout right here as it breaks out. That could be a kicking us into phase two, which we'll go over in a second here. And then another one would just be, again, an oscillator, a MACD, an RSI, something like this. You can see, again, just choppy, sloppy action. Now, for me personally, as a trend trader, my job during this stage analysis is if I'm identifying a stage one, I just don't want to be involved. I'm not interested. If I was someone like I, I liked a theme or a thesis or something like that, a stage one could be a way uh, or a time in which your dollar cost averaging or you're building a position or something like that. But for myself as a trend trader, stage one, I'm not really interested. If you're a revision to the mean trader or so someone who likes to buy support, sell resistance, again, stage one may be for you. Same with stage four when we get into that. So stage two, let's use that same example. Let's So let's say with MindMed, we're getting this breakout of finally of stage one. So stage two is often where you see the markup of prices. Generally speaking, the break from phase one into phase two has something to do with some sort of change in fundamentals. There is a news event or uh, in a drug company, an FDA approval, or in the sense of something like NVIDIA, you have AI as a story taking off or Ozempic or whatever it is. You have some sort of big change in the way people perceive this. And now is when you're going to start getting momentum traders and trend traders getting involved after this kind of stage one breakout. You have the initial momentum traders who are buying the breakout. If that breakout sticks, then you have trend traders coming in, going after. So again, you're looking for some sort of shift in fundamentals. Could be as simple as an earnings report, something like that, saying, hey, we are now in a new phase of the market, and this is phase two. Now, um, here's ELF. So this is just a beauty supply company. So you can see the stage one spent years, we're talking from 2020 to 2022, 2023, in this stage one area of the market, we get kicked out, I think this was actually picked up on like TikTok or something, they're like a discount beauty supply company, and then there's a bunch of reviews coming out and said that they were as good as like the high end makeup companies or something like that. But anyway, you can see Stage two looks dramatically different. Now we're in an uptrend. So now is when trend traders and pullback traders like myself are getting interested in saying, okay, I'm going to be interested in buying this stock. I'm going to be interested in buying this market. Now let me start to apply indicators or uh, chart patterns or candlestick patterns based off of what I see there. Moving averages, right? Now we have the 50-day moving average pointing up, sloping up, and supporting prices in most case. And then we have the 200-day moving average behind us here pointing up, sloping up, and supporting price as well. So again, in uptrends, this is what you want to see. As long as this continues, you're in a stage two. So the idea is that if you are someone who wants to trade all stages, you've gone from someone who's buying support, selling resistance, to now you've switched your mindset, you switch your tools, you're more interested in trading with the trend in some sort of direction. If you're someone who is just looking to use this as a way to stay out of the wrong side of trades, what I would say is stage one, if you're a trend trader, you just don't get involved at all. If we're in stage two, you don't short it right? You just avoid it. If you're looking to short, you look to get long. If you can't get long, you don't get short, you, you move on, you say this is a stage two uptrend. I am not interested. And we can move on from there. Uh, volume, you can see the volume in stage one was relatively low. And then we break out a little bit of volume, you can see more volume occurring as we start to break out on phase two or stage two. Now we have stage three, which is our distribution stage. And stage three is, generally speaking, it's going to be hard depending on when your market is for me to find example of these, but it is the opposite of stage one. Price of a security has gotten to a level where anytime it moves a little bit higher, there is a seller that steps in and pushes the market down. And if it moves a little higher, there's a seller that comes in and pushes the market down. So this is where, again, those value investors are starting to transact. They're saying that, 
this stock, in this case Peloton, at $150 has gotten too expensive, and if I own any, I have to sell it, and if I'm someone who likes to short securities, I have to short it. So the idea is now, right, we're stepping back and we're saying, this has gotten too much. This is the distribution phase. It's no longer the accumulation. It's no longer the markup. Now we are in the distribution stage of the market where quite often you will see these events. They say that uh, tops are long, ev long sloppy events in the market where there's a lot of money that changes hands. You have retail people chasing Peloton at 150. You'll start to see insiders selling Peloton at 150. Note uh, AMC as well, right? There was a lot of insiders selling during that mania. They were selling to the retail people, the people who are inside the company and, and knew better. Same thing with Peloton, Zoom, DocuSign, all of these companies, they became these momentum vehicles for day traders and momentum traders and retail traders. Uh, but the institutions and the insiders are saying this is getting a little bit too crazy. It's time to sell, right? And this is where you'll notice if you look at this, it's still going to be technically in an uptrend until about this point right here. So at, at some point, the trend trader looks at this and says this is no longer an uptrend. At the very least, it's a sideways trend. When it breaks down here, it's now a downtrend. So it's time for me to go. But this is stage three. So just take stage one, flip it on its head. Uh, now we have stage three here. We can do this with moving averages as well. You see the moving averages in this big area. You could take this whole area and say this is stage three as well. You see the moving averages starting to cross back and forth over each other. They start to move sideways. You know, we're getting a lot of chop and slop. Same again we saw on the bottom of stage two. You, can, you guys can almost guess in advance what this stage is going to be. And then same with volume. You can see how volume was really, really high during the climb. And then it starts to die down in phase two. Interest in the company starts to die down. All of a sudden, people go, man, this is really just a bike with an iPad strapped to it, right? It's, it's not going to change the world. It's, it shouldn't be worth more than Exxon. And, and interest starts to die. And what generally is happening with that is the momentum traders who keep trying to buy momentum keep getting stopped out and they keep losing money and they go to the next momentum stock. So now you have a whole group of traders who are no longer there that were helping support the price. You have the trend traders who are looking at this and saying this is a stage three uh, distribution. So I'm not interested. Now, could this then become another lag up if say Peloton wasn't a bike with an iPad strapped to it, but a pharmaceutical company or something that actually is going to be doing well in the long run? Absolutely. That's why I said you don't know whether it's phase three or phase one until it resolves, right? So in this case, but either way, you have momentum traders and you have trend traders who are sitting on the sidelines. They're waiting for this to get resolved one way or another. Then we have stage four. Stage four is the decline. And with Peloton, again, it was easy to see. As soon as this stage three resolved lower, you had from 150 by when I took the screenshot, it was $4. Right? And the same thing applies here. You have this moving average. It's, you know, the moving averages are far apart. They're pointing down. The moving averages are, are resisting price now instead of supporting it. You generally have this idea of if I'm a short person or I'm a shorting stocks, then I can short this because moving average is pointing down. It's in stage four decline. I can short rallies. I can trade with the trend to the short side. What I can't do is buy the stock. As a trend trader or someone who studies stage analysis, there's no reason to be owning something in a stage four decline. Now, if you look at the rest of this chart, you can see it's starting to flatten out. The moving averages are starting to flatten out. Could this just be more distribution before pushing lower? Absolutely. Could it be that Peloton has maybe found an equilibrium point and is going to start a stage one uptrend? Yes. Now, does it mean if it starts, or sorry, a stage two uptrend, if it starts a stage two uptrend, does that mean it's going to go back to 150? <laughs> Absolutely not, right? These trends are going to be different based off of size. And if you zoom into an intraday chart, you're going to see some of these as well. Right. Peloton, again, you can see the volume kicks way up as we start to sell off here and people go, oh man, I can't believe I owned this company at that valuation. That's insane. 
you get people running for the door and the volume kind of picks back up. So we have trade ideas and how we're going to use this in trade ideas. I'm going to show you a little bit of layout too. So we have uh, breakout traders are going to be interested in phases one and three. Trend traders are going to be interested in phases two and four. So we're going to use trade ideas to filter all of these stocks based off these different stages. And then we're going to avoid the stages that we're not interested in. So the layout I made is right here. It's fairly simple. You'll recognize these moving averages. They're the same moving averages I have in here. And I have four of these little tree maps. I've got one, two, three, do this. So I've got, yeah, one, two, and three, and four, four of these heat maps. And each of these are going to be roughly, you know, we're taking a you know, conceptual thing, and we're trying to mathematic, but each of these things are going to roughly look like they're in this potential stage one uptrend and breaking out for here. These are potentially going to be stage two, right? Down here is going to potentially be stage three distribution stocks, and down here are going to be potentially uh, stage four decliners. So the how we did this, I just looked at essentially the moving averages, and I put in some filters and trade ideas, if you're interested, obviously, the link is in the description below, or you can hit me up on Twitter or anything like that, I'll get you the link to this setup. So the idea is that if you're a breakout trader, you're going to take a look at this box right here, and you're going to say, okay, let me find these stage ones. And if I zoom out, again, you'll see these potential kind of round of bots. If this is something where you want to pick something up that you believe is uh, undervalued security that you think can go higher, then this is going to be the area for you. If you are a trend continuation player, you're going to kind of focus on this box right here. And both of these obviously to the long side. If you are then a stage or you're a shorter, then you're going to, you know, focus on these boxes as well. So I would take this layout and then just go from there and say, okay, this is what I'm interested in. You can just get rid of the other ones and go from there. For me, I really like, I'm interested in stage one setups that are just breaking that. So this NKTR, I know nothing about it, but just the fact that we're potentially breaking out of this bottom right here, we've broken out of there and we're holding for a couple days and we're putting in this, you could call this a, a rounded bottom or a smiley face or whatever pattern you want to use. That to me is interesting. I also like these the stage two companies, right? You can see the moving averages pointing up the 200 day and the 50 day. This one's pulling back into it as well. This might be a good fishing ground for stocks that are in good sustained uptrends and you're looking to build lists for these names to go higher. Uh, you can see those there as well. So that's stage analysis. That is, I should say, the basics of stage analysis. There's obviously much more you can dive into. This, again, is a concept that I absolutely love for, if no other reason, it can keep you out of trouble. And that's really all we care about is just staying out of trouble the best we can. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. If you like this kind of content, again, share it around, tweet it out, likes, comments, subscribes, all that kind of stuff. And I'll talk to you guys soon.